And now, their opponent for today's game, Team British Columbia. captains for both teams to center field for the referees meeting and coin toss. I'd like to introduce you to the referees for today's game. Remple, back judge Matt Banovich, side judge Patrick Mullins, and field judge Nick Hale. British Columbia has won the coin toss and they have deferred to the second half. and many other proud indigenous peoples whose presence continues to enrich our land and society. And at this time, we please ask you to rise and move your hats as we play our national anthem. Football fans, it's time for the 2023 Football Canada Cup. Round two, day two, consolation side number five, Team British Columbia taking on number eight, Team New Brunswick. Welcome inside Foot Field Broadcast Booth. I am TJ Phillips alongside former CFL Rob Herrett. We're at South Campus, Edmonton, Alberta. Happy to have you with us, Rob. And uh, day two, consolation side. It's a whole new start of the tournament for these two teams. Yeah, thanks, TJ. Yeah, lots going on today. Obviously, lots of good football to look forward to. And, uh, you know, both these teams have something to prove. They didn't... Uh, play their best football on Sunday and so they're coming out ready to uh, show what they can do with a couple more days being together, uh, working together as units. We're going to see what progress they've made from Sunday. A lot to play for here on the Constellation side as the seeding does matter for next year's tournament as well. Both teams shut out in Sunday's opening round action by the higher seed better clubs. So hopefully we'll see some offensive breakouts happen here today at Footfield. 
where it's 17 degrees and sunny. Wind's not a factor. Easton Fenske's back to kick for BC. They won the toss, elected to defer. McLaughlin and Green are back for New Brunswick to receive. Not a great kickoff. Chip shot, it bounces down. Covered by the special teams at the 38-yard line, and New Brunswick will head out on offense. Interesting to see the kick, and uh, was it design or was it a miss kick? Because often uh, you'll look to catch someone sleeping a little bit, and again with a little check bounce on the ball, BC had a chance at it, but obviously ready to go on defense here. Mike Linder will lead the New Br Brunswick offense out onto the field. First and 10 from the 38-yard line on New Brunswick's side of the ball. Heavy run in Sunday's action. A lot of touches for Green and Crowley combined. Let's see if Linder goes to the air to start the action today. Now it's a handoff up the middle to Green, and he stopped at the line. Well, this front seven from BC is going to be a stout group today. Um, in the earlier game in the week, they found a way to uh, really step it up in the second half, and it became a very difficult defense for Ontario to move the ball on. We'll see if New Brunswick has trouble getting things going on offense against the defense that really uh, stood tall Sunday in their second half of the game. Samson Green with the carry. One yard, second and nine. In motion to the right side. Hand off, that's Crowley, cuts out to the right side. He's tackled at around the 45, and that'll bring up a third down. So it's interesting coming out on second and long and going back to the run. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how disciplined these teams are to stay balanced in their play calling. And the coaches, obviously, with lots of experience, that's why they're here coaching for their provinces. But uh, again, sometimes the pressure mounts as these games go on to see if you can move the ball. So two straight run plays from New Brunswick. We'll see uh, how, that, uh, how that carries out over the course of this game. Nick Hersey on to punt for New Brunswick. A quick two and out from them. Ryder to receive the kick. Punts away, good snap. Good hang time. New Brunswick's gonna have to watch the no yards. It's grabbed, there's the flag, and it will be no yards on the play. The great heads up play by a non-return guy. Now maybe he's a returner uh, on his high school team or he looks like a skill position player at some place. But again, good heads up because that ball coming down, if it hits the back of a jersey, the ball's bouncing around. But getting the no yards call and picking it up quickly on a bouncing ball is, is like getting a return. So you're gonna get some extra yards here. Great field position uh, for BC to start. With the penalty, that'll put BC at their own 46 to start their first drive. Aiden Hewitt will start at quarterback. He came in in relief of Davidson in the first game. We'll see what Aiden Hewitt can do. Aiden Hewitt, handoff to number nine. Cole Jew breaks a tackle out across midfield. Big tackle, ball is loose. But BC's on it, first down for British Columbia. Well, good job up front of the Hoggies, just creating the space, and you'll see that, you know, again, untouched for a number of yards, finding his way through uh, the congested middle of the field, getting a first down on the first play. Great momentum builder for BC early. Great run from Cole Jew. It's first down and 10 from the New Brunswick 53, BC into New Brunswick territory. There's another ha handoff to Cole Jew. He's met in the backfield. By number nine, Landon Dingy, and that'll be a tackle for a loss. Good play. Well, we're going to have to see if BC can find a rhythm on offense. It seemed like on Sunday they'd have a big play, a really good play, but then it'd follow up with something that not so good, sometimes a mental breakdown, a bad penalty, or something like that. So we'll see if BC can, can find some consistency, something they were lacking a little bit against Ontario on Sunday. Both teams failed to score in their opening round matchup. It's second and long for Hewitt and Team BC. Hard count, receivers in motion out to the right side. Passes swung out to the far side to number 19, Conti. And he's tackled well short of the first down. It will be third down for BC. So a couple quick series already for both these guys. Again, we talked about rhythm on offense. And again, just running a wide receiver screen there. Again, the blocking out in front is going to be absolutely critical. We've seen it before, and we've seen other teams use a very similar similar play. It's used very often, and again, the blocking is critical to a play like that to make it uh, successful. In that case, they didn't have the blocking out in front, and he was really one-on-two trying to make what he can of the pass. 
That was actually William Lowe with the catch. He was the number one receiver on Sunday. But uh, not enough for the first down. So here's the punting unit on for BC. Ryder, he had nine punts on Sunday. He punches this one down the field. Going to let it hop out. BC's going to have to back up. Green jumps on it. McLaughlin jumps on it, excuse me, and there's the no yards flag. So again, no yards coming out again, and I saw, I was watching uh, BC's cover guys, and what the interesting piece about BC is in high school they play American Rules football. And so on a punt, you don't have to give them five yards, so in their heads, they didn't seem like they were actually urgent to get out of that five-yard five halo, and so in this case, they were happy to stay in, reduce the gain, take the yards on the penalty, um, but inside the 40 is where they're going to be starting for this drive. The runs will start at the, their own 38-yard line, out for their second series, two and out on the first drive Linder letting the play clock roll down and off up the middle Crowd, set greens tackled by number 84 by BC on the front line for a short game you can see they came out in a slightly different personnel set. They had three receivers, a full back that was tight up to the line, and a tight end. So again, committing to the run is New Brunswick. Now three straight runs and bringing in some heavy bodies. Now they've switched some of those guys out, a little bit of a lighter package here with your four receivers and two backs. We'll see if they choose to go to the air on another second and long. No gain on the run. So it's second and 10. Receiver's in motion, Linder draws back, heaves one downfield, he has McLaughlin wide open, and it's a big first down play on second and long for New Brunswick. I like the play call, a little simple corner route, a very common route in Canadian football that you'll see with the wide field. There's a lot of field to cover out there, and again, the DB saw the guy cross his face. He really needed to respond earlier before the ball was thrown, but a perfectly placed ball on the outside shoulder as he ran the corner out, and uh, it's a big play for New Brunswick early. Cedric McLaughlin was wide open, and Linder hit him in stride. Great play to get this offense rolling. Green now left off tackle. He'll get a bunch, about eight, and that'll bring up second and short for New Brunswick. So that's what New Brunswick wants to try to do is stay out of those second and long situations. Obviously when you want to use a heavy dose of the run, you got to be productive in it. So now it's second and three and a half or four. Um, they're in a much better shape here to convert this second down. Seven for Green on the run. Clock is rolling at foot field. 6.45 first quarter, no score. Second drive. New Brunswick has something cooking into BC territory. Short handoff, maybe one, maybe two, and that'll be third and short coming up for New Brunswick and a decision, early decision for Coach Colangelo. Well, I think with the struggles we saw in their previous game and getting points on the board, I think this is a no, this is a no brainer right now. You're inside the 40. Um, you know, you're moving the ball. You got a little bit of excitement and energy in your guys. I think they're going for it for sure here. Third and a long one. Sneak is the call. Way more than enough. That's pushed over the line and it's first down New Brunswick. Yeah, good call and you can see just the, the, the pile moving forward and that's what you want to see on a quarterback sneak. You want to try to inch your way through a seam or whatever you want, a big drop, big push there from the Hoggies and you can see as they uh, make some exchanges, they've changed personnel for that and brought in some heavier bodies and obviously they were able to convert that quite easily. Great push from the New Brunswick front line. Fresh set of downs for quarterback Mike Linder. On the 31 yard line, first and 10. And off up the middle to Green. He pushes forward. Team tackled after a gain of about four. So they went back into that three receiver and tight end set and you can see they're making that change, bringing in a big body for the run game, trying to take advantage of, of uh, extra weight on the front line to uh, move the pile. In that case, uh, short gain, but uh, puts them in a decent second down situation. We've got a timeout on the field with a BC player slow to get up out of that uh, huddle. That's number 94, Dean Barron. And with that, we'll take a, a moment to acknowledge that we'd like to send out a quick thank you to Football Canada, national sponsors and partners, Sport Canada, Volt Athletics, GameStrat, Avis, Invictus Gloves, 
Opro Mouthguards, NFL Canada, and the CFL. Thank you for being a part of the Football Canada team. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see over the course of the day with all the football games, but this one, as we kick off the day, is the attrition of players, right? This week is a heavy, heavy football for these guys. Three games in the course of a week is a lot of football, uh, and it can take its physical toll on the body. And so, again, a lot of these guys hadn't played a lot of football this spring. Again, they've probably been involved in something at their local high schools. They've probably done a little bit of training and development, and hopefully some individual training. Um, but watching the attrition and how these players survive the three games over the course of the week will be something to watch. Coming out of the timeout on the field, out of the injury timeout, it's second and seven for New Brunswick. Two backs in the backfield with Linder. Receivers start. Takes the handoff, rolls out right, dumps it off to Crowley. He's got a little room to run. He's going to have the first down. And the sticks move ahead for New Brunswick, who have great momentum here in the first quarter on their second drive. And great job of getting out of the pocket and using his legs to buy him some time. Again, they started with trips receivers on the right side. Coverage dropped, and they were able to get it to a back. And so linebackers need to learn and need to recognize early and get out on those backs in order to contain the back. And again, great job. He actually had a run pass option there. He could have taken off and run on his own, but got it to his back for the first down. Got the pass away. Crowley got the first down. They're into the red zone is New Brunswick. There's Green tackled after a gain of about three second down coming up for New Brunswick in the red zone. So as you get down into the red zone, you're often, you're often going to see the free safety start to creep into the box and take care of the run because you can't cover really a lot of the field there, and you'll often see a cover one. So as an offensive coordinator, you know you're going to get that cover one and that corner route down here that they hit on earlier for the big play is often used here. We'll see what they do here in the red zone. You can see the free safety just inside the goal line watching for that pass. We'll see what New Brunswick does. And off to Green, up the middle. Tried to make a move at the line. He was tackled by a couple of BC defenders. That'll be third down, and it looks like the field goal unit will come out for head coach Zach Colangelo. Well, I think a good call. Get some points on the board. Try to build some momentum early here with the field goal attempt. But interesting that it seemed like they were probably committed to going for it on third down. If they would have got maybe a yard or two more, made it a little bit closer again. Great job by BC's defense to, to stiffen there and reduce the gain, not giving him that choice, and now forcing the field goal attempt. Ben Wogamit will attempt the field goal. 17-yard field goal. No wind today. Beautiful day at Foot Field. Snap is good. Kick is through. And New Brunswick grabs the early lead, 3-0. So first points for New Brunswick in the tournament. They're excited about that, obviously. And again, to come out early against a, a team like BC, again, you look at the population draw of these, some of these smaller provinces and where they're getting their players from, you know, to, to come out and show strong against a, a BC team is going to go well for New Brunswick. We talked about, you know, their opportunities to increase the rankings or improve on the rankings from previous Canada Cups. And so a good start for New Brunswick. Nice little drive, a combination of attacking them on the ground and through the air. They're obviously using the ground game to set up some things in the air, and they're able to do that on that drive. Just not uh, finish it with a major. I thought with that momentum, they probably could have punched that in. But uh, again, settling for the field goal. But needless to say, they're up in the, in the game today. Promising drive from the New Brunswick offense. Stalls in the red zone, as you mentioned, Rob. Mixing it up, pass and run. It was the big play to Cedric McLaughlin that uh, gave New Brunswick some mojo. And they cash with three points. So it's three to nothing, first quarter. Consolation morning here at Foot Field, New Brunswick leading BC. Ryder dials it up. Kick is to the right side. It'll be picked up by Carter Dallas on a hop. Makes a move at the 20 through one tackle. Breaks another and he's wrapped up at the 37 yard line. Broke a couple of tackles and nearly was home free. 
Wow, close to 25 yards on that return, and uh, special teams is going to play a big part over the course of the entire day, but in this game, I think it's important to see what special teams can do. How can it impact the game? And again, 25-yard return is a pretty nice return, just as you said, uh, just inside their own 40, ready to get on the move. Let's see if they can find some consistency, which they've struggled to so far in the tournament. Aiden Hewitt and the BC offense will start their second drive from their own 37. Lots of motion in the backfield. Hewitt keeps out to the right side, and he's pulled down uh, by the shoelaces after a short game. So a design run for your quarterback. Looked like he had an option to pitch it to the tailback, but again, he makes the read. Um, had a little bit of space, saw the space, but it closed quickly. You can see there, just getting the shoe. Again, holding up long enough for his teammates to come in and finish off the tackle for the short game. Great tackle by Gideon Aliku for New Brunswick, keeping the BC quarterback to a short gain on first down. Second and seven, 229 remaining in the first quarter. New Brunswick leads three to nothing. On their first drive, they got one first down, thanks to Malachi Kolju. And we'll see what they decide to do here on second and seven. Give up the middle. There we go, Willie. There we go, Willie. Tackled after a short gain. That was number 26, Ethan Dahl with the carry. So New Brunswick came with a little bit of a different look there. They had a five-man front, so that's five linemen. Sometimes it's a linebacker that's walked up onto the edge, but they're really trying to stop that run game. So they came with five guys, and in that case, they did a great job. BC electing to bring their punt team out, at least it looks like they're going to punt at this point in time. And so another big win for New Brunswick early on in this one. New Brunswick run defense holding strong. Third and three is the downage. Punt team's out. Kick is away by Ryder. Floats down. McLaughlin has it. Tries left. He'll be forced out of bounds at about the 41-yard line, and New Brunswick will head back out onto the field. So it's going to be interesting to watch the uh, BC punt team now. Two in a row, New Brunswick has gotten pressure in on the punt. Now, they haven't been close enough to get hands up or get a, get a block, but again, they are getting pressure to the punter. Again, and with, with these guys being high school players, we've seen at times uh, the long snap is skipped off the turf and they maybe need a little bit more time. It wouldn't be surprised if New Brunswick really dials up something uh, on the next punt cover team. Brunswick leading three nothing, starting from their own 38. Hand off to Bawa. He's hit first at the line, pulled down by a couple of BC defenders, short gain, second down and long coming up. Well, and again, that front seven continues to pursue hard. Uh, the first contact was made, a little bit of a high tackle there. He ended up getting out of it, and that's why you want to wrap up around the body. A strong running back like that, you're going to want to make sure you tackle him properly or he's going to run through some of those arm tackles. Bawa, stout, strong, lower body, pushed through that first high tackle. He got one, second and nine. Linder steps back to pass. Pressure from the right side, flushed out left. Tries to break a tackle, pull down, good tackle in the open field by number 20, John O'Neill, or sorry, number 20, uh, Liam Flynn. And that'll force a third down in a punting situation coming up for New Brunswick. As you mentioned, you can see him roll out here and what he does early, he tucks the ball away really early. And as a quarterback, if you can keep the ball kind of cocked and up high, then you can at least give the illusion that there's a threat to throw the ball still in it. Usually the defenders are a little bit more hesitant to rush because they may have a receiver in behind him. Now, there wasn't anybody there, again, for him to look to. But again, as a play design, you want to get receivers into different areas of the field. Hopefully, next time they can get somebody in that spot. You can see a late substitution coming on here. Going to take some time to get on the field. They got lots of time to get this off. Still, still uh, if I guess we're down to five seconds on the clock to get this snapped. It looks like they may take uh, a penalty and just move this back a few yards. They will. Flag out. Oh, they're going to call a timeout, actually. They're going to talk about it. They didn't really have their personnel on the field, as Rob said. And so we'll have a timeout on the field for New Brunswick, leading 3 to nothing. Punt coming up. This is something you see in these types of games with these types of teams. They haven't worked together for that long. And so sometimes, you know, 
One guy gets a little dinged up, goes sees the trainer and forgets to tell the head coach, hey, I'm on this special teams and whatever. Usually they go to their offense or defensive coach so they know when they get a substitution in. But sometimes special teams is the is where we've seen some mix-ups where lack of personnel, we're missing a guy here, missing a guy there. So again, something these teams are working on and uh, continuing trying to iron out. And uh, their special teams coordinator is going to continue to to work on those pieces with these young players, obviously aspiring to maybe make the jump to the next level in a couple of years here. Um, so always working to get better. 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ryder back to retrieve the punt. Hersey's kick is away. Line drive. Bounces out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Short punt. BC's offense looking to get something going here. Maybe one play before the end of the quarter. So your net gain on that punt is about 25 yards. There's no penalty, obviously no return. And by kicking it out of bounds, taking the 25 yards may have been a good thing. And we've seen over the course of the game so far on Sunday, and then uh, we're gonna be watching for today. What's that net gain on a punt? How many yards are you gaining as a team? Is it worth punting? Hewitt takes the snap, flings the pass to Carter Dallas. Tackled up around the first down yardstick. I think he'll have enough. And the period gun will go to end the first quarter. BC with the first down. And New Brunswick with the lead. One of the things I love to see as we, uh, as we switch ends is I love to see the coordinators on offense keep it simple, especially early on. Um, it's nice to see them just get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. And we talked about that on Sunday. And that's that what that play is. It's just the outside receivers running a simple like slant or an under route. Just get them the ball and let them make a play. And that's what they did there. Uh, obviously got a first down out of it. We'll see if they can keep it simple and keep the ball moving. BC has talented receivers in that receiving core. And you're right, let them fly, let them loose and try to get some rhythm in this offense that is yet to score yet this tournament. First quarter. Brought to you by Volta Athletics. Volta Athletics is the official supplier of online strength and conditioning services for Football Canada. To find out how you or your team can be in top competitive shape with sports-specific workouts, visit www.voltathletics.com. Second quarter coming up here at Foot Field. 2023 Football Canada Cup. Number five, BC taking on number eight, New Brunswick. Both teams shut out on Sunday in the opening round. New job, Brunswick leads three to nothing. TJ and Rob with you here in the Footfield broadcast booth. We are on the New Brunswick side of half 54 yard line. BC picking up a first down on the pass to Carter Dallas. And Aiden Hewitt seeing what he can do. Trailing by three. Receivers move left. Pass comes out to the right side near us. Catch is made by number 82, Noe Jelks. Breaks the tackle up around the 45 yard line. Good gain on the play. Well, right back to another simple play. Just a simple wide receiver screen. They had no blockers out here. They're like, give them the ball in space. And you can see after he caught the ball, he was able to get upfield, get, you know, he probably caught about a yard behind the line of scrimmage, which is the design. And then again, just using his quick feet to get outside and just get tight that sideline, get a great second and short here. Second and four for Hewitt. He'll hand off up the middle, big hole for number 18, Andrea, and he'll have the first down and more for BC. Well, we talked earlier about fundamental tackling and what that looks like, and in that case, New Brunswick really needs to wrap him up. He bounced off the first two guys on contact. They weren't able to wrap him up, and that's where, uh, you know, you're going to have to be really disciplined as a defender to break down and make sure you're in a good position to make those tackles. But great job and hard running there by the back to get a first down. Grady Andrea with a big gain on second and short. First down, BC, their second of the drive. Hewitt back, flings a pass out to the left side to Dallas with some room to run. He jumps over a tackle and he's gobbled up by a couple of New Brunswick defenders. Short game. Well, they had the blockers out in front, but New Brunswick came with a lot of pressure and they had a great job. He took on the block. You can see number 19 of BC kind of getting blown up a little bit on the side again. And then he continued on to make that tackle. Great job of New Brunswick being aggressive on the swing pass. 
Gain of one for Dallas. It's second and nine for BC. Hewitt sends his receivers. Drops back to pass, flings it out to the left side. Wide open with room to run. Ball's drop, picked up by New Brunswick. Ball is out. It was knocked out on the way down. Somebody got a hand in there. New Brunswick recovers. Big play by the New Brunswick defense. Well, and again, he had the first down yardage. He had his team on the move, but just didn't secure it. You can see on the replay, makes a move, comes inside, and there he goes. It gets the ball punched out. I think it was number 92 came in, and that's the danger for receivers. For uh, when you catch the ball, you try to get to the outside where the pursuit is not coming, but great job of New Brunswick playing to the end of the play, getting the ball out, and getting their offense back on the field. Huge play by New Brunswick when BC was threatening on their drive. Hey, hey, and off to Green Flags on the play. Green stopped at the line. We'll see what the call is from the official. It is holding against New Brunswick, so that'll back them up. 10 yards. So penalties are going to really uh, play into these offensive uh, play calling strategies. Um, obviously, teams that like to set things up with the run, which is good. Um, but again, now you're going to be backing up into first and 20. So we'll see what these uh, coordinators decide to do in these long distance downs here on first and 20. Again, as an offense, you want to get part of it back for sure. Um, you know, again, if you can get half of it back, that's usually a win to put yourself in like a second in eight, nine, or 10, something like that. We'll see what they can do here on first and 20, of course, near their own goal line, only out on what's like the 12 yard line or so. So we're gonna see if they can get a little bit of space um, here between them and their own end zone. Linder back all the way up to his own 12, first and 20, 9.04 remaining in the first half. Hand off to Bawa. Tries the right side, wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by the BC defense. I'd like to see him start to look to pull out a little bit. And again, number 14, the quarterback, you can see he's handing it off in the backfield and BC's all over the run. Again, looking at a little bit of play action. Again, drawing the defenders in and on that play. You can see on the replay that edge man started to close down on the handoff. Again, that quarterback, if he can get the edge, there's a lot of room out there. We'll see what he decides to do here on now second and even further. Good job by Sabolski to stay home and make the tackle. Second and long handoff. Green pushes through ahead up to the 20-yard line, and it'll be third and 12. You mean conservative play call considering the situation, but again, opting to be safe and relying on the defense now. Again, they got 10 yards on the run, which is a great, uh, which is a great run. Again, unfortunately, at second and 22, it's not going to get the job done to keep the offense out there, but it does buy them a little bit of space. And again, we'll see once again if special teams plays a part in the field position. The returners are lined up right around center. And uh, so BC likely will get the ball back in pretty good field position. And... Uh, believe the receiver that put the ball on the turf is one of the returners. Very dangerous athlete. As uh, we've seen already, they've come to him a few times now. He's going to want to hold on to the ball. So, all right. So playing the field position game by taking a knee in the end zone. They feel like that's best strategy here, which I don't uh, question that at all. Again, with uh, BC's offense still not finding that rhythm. And again, that turnover playing a big part in keeping uh, them off the scoreboard. Again, giving up a couple points. Still have the lead, but it's early on and field position is going to be important. Hersey concedes the safety. Makes it 3-2 to two now for New Brunswick. Eight minutes to go in the second quarter. BC will get the ball at their own 35-yard line to start this drive. Those holding penalties are devastating, Rob. But New Brunswick not super disciplined in the first game. 10 penalties, 83 yards. But anytime you take a holding on offense, that puts you in a deep hole. So 3-2 to two is the score for New Brunswick. Aiden Hewitt takes the snap. Running back fell. Hewitt's got to get rid of it or take the sack as Aliku was all over him. And he gets the ball away just in time. 
Uh, he's been an active player on the defense already today again. Little miscommunication in the backfield. You can see it was likely supposed to be a run, but again, the handoff didn't happen, and the quarterback kind of was running for his life there. So great pressure by New Brunswick after giving up the safety. That's what you want your defense to do. Is We'll see if they can complete that process on second and long here and force a punt. But BC's coming out with... A good group of receivers here ready to attack the secondary. See if they can convert this second and 10. Five receivers for Aiden Hewitt. Look to pass. Receivers covered. Dumps it off to number 19. Yapo Conte went off his hands and incomplete. Third down coming up for BC. So Conte is a running back coming out of the backfield. You can see there on the little flat route. He buys himself some time. Sneaks away from the pressure. But again, just outside, you can see it's probably the right place to throw the ball. He's got to bring it down just a little bit because the defenders were coming from the inside of the field. And as a quarterback, you try to teach them to throw them to the open space. So again, if he brings that ball down, throws it to his outside, he's able to catch it and turn to the outside where there's more space, maybe able to get a first down. But that did not happen. And so New Brunswick uh, giving up the safety was a good call. They're going to get the ball back here in pretty decent position. Line drive kick from Ryder. McLaughlin's going to field it on the dribble at his own 38. Around the left side. Special teams unit going to close in on him. Good tackle by Josh Seau. And New Brunswick will start. There's a flag on the play. So you can see on the replay there again, he lost a few yards and got around the defender to get his positive. But this... Uh, Penalty, I'm sure, is going to impact this. The officials are discussing it. Early indications look like it is against New Brunswick. And it will be. That will take him back. It looks like about 15 yards. I didn't see the signal, Rob. Did you? No, I didn't. He was facing the other way. We'll maybe <laughs> get one here. I think, I think it wasn't a legal block. I think it may have been unnecessary roughness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, it, I think you're right. We're going way back. So, again, talk about field position. That's kind of flipping it back on New Brunswick, where now they're going to be working out of their own, uh, close to their own red zone here as they uh, come out. Yeah, wow, right inside the 20. So unsportsmanlike penalty will march New Brunswick all the way back to their 15-yard line. Field position battle here this morning at Foot Field. Penalties starting to catch up to New Brunswick a little bit. They have the lead still, though, 3-2. to two. Well, that's a difference of 30 yards in field position on that between the return and the penalty, so... Really unfortunate for New Brunswick. They're right back in the same situation they were on the last drive, back in their own end. Oh, miscommunication on the snap. There's a flag. McLaughlin can't handle the pass. Ball is loose. BC jumps on it. There is a flag, though, and it looked like maybe it would be offside. Well, interesting because ugh, half the guys weren't playing, half the guys were. <laughs> they threw it to the receiver. He didn't catch it. And BC was jumping on the ball. Again, if that's a lateral, it's a live ball. If it's, I mean, BC, I, you just, I, think I can't remember, BC got it there. But again, if it's a live ball, then it's going to be either a loss of yards or turnover. Okay, and it's off. It's, it's the penalty's on the defense, so it saves the offense a little bit. But those are the little things. you got to make sure you finish the play. As a high school player, you got to keep that focus because you don't know what the call is. You may think you, you do, but again, if one of your guys jumped instead of them, um, you want to make sure you finish that play. So uh, BC costing themselves five yards on that penalty back at first down. That was odd because the snap was off. They didn't snap it on the right count. I thought maybe it might have been uh, offside on the offense, but uh, offside defense is the call. First and five now from the New Brunswick 20. Motion in the backfield. McLaughlin takes the pitch. Wrapped up at the 20. No game from McLaughlin on first down. Well, good pursuit by the BC defense. Again, they saw the slot receiver coming in motion. The little It was well-timed and well-executed from a back standpoint, but the blockers out in front weren't able to move bodies and create a seam for your speedy receiver coming across the formation. And so they're going to be facing a second and short here. It looks like they got about a yard on that play. So 
Um, see if they can convert this and, and keep out of a, either a punt or another safety situation. Linder set up for a pass. He has Green beside him. Hands off up the middle. A little bit of space. Cuts to the right. Green's got some room to run. He's pulled down finally up around the 36, 37 yard line. First down, New Brunswick. It seems like New Brunswick is a little bit ahead of BC on the offense. You can see him popping out of the crowd there and just again using his speed, accelerating through space. And so again, the penalty that cost them, they're still not back to where they would have had the ball, but at least building some momentum. This offense is moving the ball more consistently today than they did on Sunday. And again, they're gonna be looking to continue this drive with some fine play from these young high school players. Out of the shadows of their goal post, they'll hand it off again to Green. Good gain on first down. Samson Green having a good day uh, with the ball. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, no, when, when, they're, uh, when they're committed to their run, TJ, they're doing a great job of sticking with it. You know, again, in their own end, if they get, you know, three to four yards, would they go for it? A little different situation going for it in your own end than the other end. But again, obviously, you can see the momentum building for New Brunswick's offense. They're just a little bit more consistent out here this morning. Offensive line's been good, creating space for Green up front. Second and five. Linder hands off to Green again. Off the right tackle, runs into the pile, pulled down short of the first down, third down coming up. Decision time for sure. I think he got enough to make it close. You're going to be short about a yard and a half or two. Looks like two, and the punt team is coming out. Another cautious decision, or I guess conservative. I won't try to sound too judgmental. But <laughs> yeah, with yeah. a one-point lead this late in the half, and a field position battle ongoing. Colangelo elects to punt. And number 11, Hersey, is out to deliver. So again, we'll see uh, if special teams makes a difference, can flip the field here. But again, decent drive considering the penalty and where they started from to get a few first downs and buy themselves some space. Again, defense is playing well today. We'll see if they can continue that trend. Good punt from Hersey. Sends number 82, Jelks back. Good coverage, breaks the tackle. There's gonna be a couple of flags on the play. I saw at least a face mask, maybe more. And you can tack on the penalty to a decent return from Jelks. Seems like uh, the penalties on, uh, on special teams, you can see right there, right there's the face mask. I'm wondering if the other flag came out before the face mask and maybe was an illegal block, so maybe they'll offset. We'll see what the officials come out of their huddle uh, letting us know. Yep, you called it, Rob. Good eye. Illegal block against BC, and they'll actually go the other way. So a legal block, they must have missed the face mask altogether. Interesting yeah. uh, interesting uh, call there. I mean, from the booth, and we're a lot further away that they missed that one, but not great for BC. Great for New Brunswick if their defense can make a stand here. Defense has been good. Hewitt. Hand off left side. Short gain on first down from Andrea. I'm a little surprised the BC coaches weren't out on the field talking to the officials on that. I think it was kind of open field, but uh, needless to say, BC's got their hands full, working out of their own end. The same situation New Brunswick's been in the last couple of drives, starting close to their own end zone. We'll see if BC can convert this uh, first down and keep this drive alive to get out of their own end. 2.55 to go in the half. And off again to Andrea, left side, a little bit of room, breaks a tackle, first down, BC. Uh, big belief in their offensive line and their offense moving the ball here. So uh, that's a, a good call, gutsy call on second and five, but obviously that belief served them well and they've uh, got at least one first down. When you're in this part of the field and you start your drive deep in your own end, you know, the first goal of the offense is to get two first downs. If you can get two first downs and kind of get out of the shadow of your own goal posts, um, that usually is a win in a situation. Obviously, you can get more that's better, but now that they've got a first down, they'll see if they can get a second one uh, to keep this drive alive with the clock 
ticking here at uh, 245. We'll see what BC has on offense. Inside three minutes now, stop time. Andrea with the first down. There's a pass swung out to the far side, room to run. Flag on the play. Way big gain might be called back on the near side. Good catch and run from Morgan McCubbin. I think the penalty is going to be on New Brunswick. The DB on this side of the field got into it with one of the receivers and whether he tossed him to the ground. But uh, you could see early on the New Brunswick uh, coaches were talking to the refs and they saw the flag come out. I don't know if this will add to it or if it will be uh, negated because of the gain on the play. It is against New Brunswick. And they will move the ball ahead. So big gain, 25 yard play from McCubbin. Add another 10 onto it. And BC has something cooking here late in the first half. They're now at the New Brunswick 41 yard line. Uh, TJ, you mentioned earlier the penalties from, uh, from the last game on New Brunswick. And again, they're starting to add up, rolling in the first half. And they've got a couple big penalties too that have cost them uh, significant field position, that being one of them right there. A couple on sportsmanlike calls for sure. Carry on first down from number nine, Malake Kolju. Good gain on first down, second and four for UBC. Well, and you can see the BC offensive line. They've pulled two guys from the backside to lead up through the hole, creating more space and more movement there. Um, obviously, the momentum is in their favor right now. Hewitt takes the snap. Leaves for Colju. He's met in the backfield by number nine, Landon Dingy. And he stops short, third down and five coming up. And you can see first contact happens in the backfield right there to slow the feet of the back. And then the, B, or the New Brunswick defense is able to finish him off to, to limit the gain. So third and five, early decision for BC to go for it. Not a gimme by any stretch but uh, keen to get some points here before the end of the half. So going for it on third and five. BC head coach Corey Philbot, aggressive late in the first half. Hewitt slings it out to Cole Jew, cuts to the right, big hole, ahead for the first down. Great play for Malachi Cole Jew. Well, he's got bodies out in front. He makes a great cut off the initial block and that gets him enough space to get out there and get the first down. So. Early decision here, or late in the half, I guess, uh, in the first half of the game to go for it on third and five. Pays off big time for BC. Now they're in scoring position at the 24. Uh, likely field goal range if they don't get any more, but uh, the ball's moving. BC looking to get a rhythm going. Handoff to number 26, Ethan Dahl. New Brunswick read that. Dead straight away, he's tackled at the line for no gain. Owen Weir did a great job chasing him down. He was kind of at his fingertips as the back was running away. And again, a solid back. You got to wrap him up, but he finally got him down before he reached back to the line of scrimmage. But great pursuit off the backside of that play. Been waiting for BC to get a rhythm on offense. We know they can get going. Got a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball. Hewitt's going to send all five receivers. Quick pass underneath, caught by Carter Dallas. First down again for BC inside the red zone, and they're in scoring position. 102 to go in the half. Well, great job finding the hole right there. Again, just off the outstretched fingertips of 31 in the New Brunswick defense. Again, didn't quite get there. And again, first down, really close to the, the, the end zone here. BC is primed to get some points. Again, last time they were down here, they. Had a turnover, they're obviously looking to avoid that and get points here with 58 seconds left on the clock. The other piece of play here, they've got lots of time to get some plays off. Again, they can get a first down before the end zone, uh, so they want to conserve their time, but they also don't want to give a whole lot of time to New Brunswick. BC into the red zone, first and 10. They'll call a timeout, talk about their plan. They got a couple of decisions to make to try to get inside the end zone before the end of the half. You're watching the 2023 Football Canada Cup on Sports Canada. 
This one's brought to you by Opro Mouth Guards. Opro are proud to be the official mouth guard of Football Canada. Opro provide the world's most technically advanced range of mouth guards, ensuring every athlete has the best protection for their teeth. Stay protected and buy your Football Canada mouth guard at www.opromouthguards.com. So great drive put together, a uh, little bit aided by some penalties of New Brunswick. So we're seeing a little bit of undisciplined play on New Brunswick. But again, this drive started inside the BC 20. So they put a nice drive together here using the clock that was left in this half with less than a minute left. We'll see if they can finish this drive with a major. And a number of different weapons getting a touch. Hewitt getting the entire offense involved. Cole Jew and Dallas with a couple of big plays. And some penalty help from New Brunswick. First and 10. Hewitt. Pitch out to Andrea. Cuts back. Evades the tackle and is brought down near the line of scrimmage. Second down. That was great work just not taking a loss on that play. I don't know if they may have got back to the line of scrimmage or oh, it looks like it ends up being a loss of about half a yard. But again, could have been a lot worse in the backfield. Defender was there to make the tackle but missed. Um, and so again, getting back to the line of scrimmage or almost back to the line of scrimmage here now facing a second and just over 10. Yeah, it looks like a half all yard loss. Landon Dingy again in the backfield, penetrating past this line. He came up hobbling. He's favoring his, looks like maybe his right leg and he's lined up on the rush end. I think uh, New Brunswick caught that as well. Timeout is the call in the field. Is it New Brunswick or BC? It'll be BC taking their final timeout. Yeah, the play clock was down to three seconds. Coach was not sure that uh, play was gonna get off and you don't wanna make this any worse than a second and 10 and a half. So again, they used the timeout, well used timeout here late in the half, trying to get a major here with 20 sec 28 seconds left on the clock. We haven't seen BC try anything deep down the field, Rob, and maybe with the amount of room you have in the end zone to work with, now's the time to take the shot. You know, you definitely can. They've, they've, you've seen them go with a lot of swing passes, some wide receiver screens, and I know as, a, as an offensive coordinator, you're setting things up for later in the game. So often you have guys go downfield, block in front of your wide receiver screen, or block for the swing pass. One thing we've seen a few teams try on Sunday is they fake that wide receiver screen or the bubble pass, and they end up hitting a guy going downfield. So we'll see if New Brunswick's secondary can be disciplined on their receivers, um, but I think it's definitely time, it's definitely shot time here for BC, at least to get a first down, but if they can get the first down, good chance it's going to be a touchdown as they're only on the uh, 13 or 14 yard line here. So we'll see if it's time to go deep, but I, I, I think you know your point of stretching the defense is important. Um, they haven't done that, so the DBs are creeping up. They do need to stretch the defense a little bit here with some vertical routes. Two backs behind Hewitt. Dallas releases right side. Hewitt steps back to pass. Heaves into the end zone post play, and it's too far for Carter Dallas. Incomplete third down. So going to the corner route that they got beat on earlier by New Brunswick, unfortunately couldn't make the connection. There was space there, but too much space and no receiver. In the area. Field goal unit on. And a chance for BC to grab a lead late. Ja Josh Sale will be the kicker. Percy the holder. Let's go to 20 yarder, give or take. Snap is low, handle, kick is up, and it's through. Field goal is good from 21 yards, and it's 5-3 BC. So defensive coordinator out on the field with his defense talking about the big stand they had, which it was a good stand. Unfortunately, you know, between the penalties and the couple big plays, BC was able to move and put together a really big drive. So that's going to be a positive for them going into the half. Their offense really was on the move there. Probably the best drive of the tournament so far. Again, excited to uh, move the ball. Unfortunately, didn't come away with a major um, and couldn't get it into the end zone. But the field goal gives them the lead. And New Brunswick's got 14 seconds here before we take some time at the half. It took nearly six full quarters, but BC got their first offensive score. It is a field goal from Seau. 
and it is a 5-3 lead. 14 seconds remaining in the first half. New Brunswick will get a chance to maybe try a play or two, or they could just sit on the ball, see where it happens, or maybe they'll break one. McLaughlin is dangerous. He's back to receive. So is Samson Green. Hit it, steady. Well, as a coach, I think that's what you're looking for. Is you're, hey, it's about a good return. You get a good return, maybe take a shot. If not, you may just kneel this one out and uh, go into the half. Fenske tightens the straps on his helmet. Signals to his guys and lays it out. Short kick. McLaughlin will have to take it off the turf. Tries the left side. No room, really. Spread out wide. Flag is down. That's... Probably going to be holding, and finally the tackle is made by number 19, Yapo Conte on special teams. Five seconds left in the half. One of the big things on special teams as a returner is trying to field the ball in the air. And again, they were a little bit hesitant on that. It did hang up, I think, long enough. They could have sprinted forward, and the difference of catching that on the run and letting it bounce gives you time and space as a returner. And so. In that case, again, getting those guys up under that kick and catching it on their run puts them in a much different situation than they're in right now. Because again, the cover team doesn't get down for a certain amount of time. And if it's a short kick like that and you can get on it, sometimes you can find a seam because they also can't compress nearly as much. You teach them to kind of compress on the ball and squeeze the ball as a kickoff team. And in that case, if you can catch it early on the run, you sometimes can find a seam and they don't have like layers created yet where you could uh, where you could bust a long one. So looks like they're going to be kneeling this one out and going into the half. Happy with the 5-3 score again, giving up the field goal late. Uh, New Brunswick uh, had some momentum early and BC took it back with the long drive resulting in their field goal. Special teams is going to be so important in the second half. We have a field position battle. And of note, returner Cedric McLaughlin came off slow off the field on that last return. Looks shaken up maybe in the upper body region. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. The flag is twirled. The gun goes to end the second period. 5-3 BC leads New Brunswick here headed to halftime. You're watching the 2023 Football Canada Cup on Sports Canada. Stay tuned. Second half from this consolation round. BC. New Brunswick coming up. Don't lose you, cause the best luck I had was you. And I know 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have your first half stats from today's game. First down, the Brentwood had four, British Columbia had zero. Sorry, six. Large rushing, New Brunswick 67, British Columbia 43. Yards passing, New Brunswick 43, British Columbia 84. Net offense, 88 yards for New Brunswick, 127 yards for British Columbia. Passes made and completions, two passes and two completions for New Brunswick. Seven, uh, sorry, ten passes and seven completions for British Columbia. Penalty yards were six penalties for 65 yards for New Brunswick. And three penalties for 25 yards for British Columbia. Welcome back inside Foot Field here in the capital city, Edmonton, Alberta, 2023 Football Canada Cup. Coming out of halftime, BC leads New Brunswick 5-3 to three in a defensive struggle. Field position battle. I am TJ Phillips alongside former CFLer Rob Herrod. And Rob, penalties are the story for New Brunswick who find themselves trailing by two after the first half. Well, their 65 yards and penalties is almost a match for their net offense of 88 yards, and so they've got to clean that up. And we've seen in the first half, the penalties are coming at critical times, keeping drives alive for BC. You know, a couple on the last drive that got their uh, go-ahead field goal, and again, some other ones that put their offense in a real tough situation. So they've got to do a better job at just being disciplined. And again, there's going to be some penalties that happen in the course of a game. But again, the undisciplined ones are, are costing them right now. So they've got to clean that up. And then, of course, both offenses, I think, have to really, again, find their rhythm, but also take advantage of their red zone opportunities. Both offenses have been in the red zone, have only come away with field goals. And so they, they're, they're, they're running the ball in the middle of the field. They need to get it into the end zone. And again, a couple opportunities to take shots into the end zone. I think we're going to see a big play in the second half by one of these teams, and that may be the difference in this game. And that's kind of the point here. It's a 5-3 game. It's a consolation round. You know, you're fighting for seeding, Rob, and, and there just hasn't been any major chances taken. No, they haven't. We haven't really seen them stretch the field. We did see one of the two New Brunswick passes was a deep pass. And again, they've gone with a couple swing passes, which are a quasi-pass run. Again, if it's a lateral, it's, it's, it's considered a run. So some of them are getting chalked up as that. But only two passes and one going downfield. Um, obviously, New Brunswick knows who they are and believe in what they do. And they're going to stick with the run game. But again, taking some shots, stretching the defense. Because what you find is a defense, if, if you're throwing underneath all the time, the defense starts to creep up. And it makes it really difficult both on the run game but also on the short passing game. So getting a vertical route mixed in there to, to let the defense know you will go deep if you need to. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of that from New Brunswick, BC, a little bit more willing to go downfield. Um, but again, they haven't taken a lot of shots today. Both teams, I think, can uh, stretch things out a little bit in this second half. See if either offense tries to make something happen. Second half underway, BC to receive. Carter Dallas steps up and grabs it at his own 25, pushes through the pile up to about the 36. And BC will start well inside their own territory here in the third quarter. I like the aggression of the returner. We talked about in the first half, the ball's bouncing around again. He sprinted up, was able to get the ball in the air, and just by doing that, he's bettering his field position, getting the ball just outside the 35-yard line. We'll see if BC can keep that rhythm going that they had in the last drive before the half. Aiden Hewitt under center for BC. Seven for 10 in the first half for 84 yards. Nothing deep down the field, but he's been pretty lethal underneath. Handoff inside to a streaking Carter Dallas, I think it was. He'll get a few, decent gain on first down for BC. So again, running that slot reverse or the slot sweep again. Defense did a great job. They got up, the edge guy got up, up field to make him stop his feet. And that's what you want to do on a sweep is if you can get him to stop his feet and change direction and trying to go up field, 
you've kind of put your defense in a great position and that's exactly what happened. The defensive end was able to get his feet to stop on the outside, came up field, did gain a few yards, but not what they were hoping on the sweep. Ball on the 40 yard line of BC, second and six. The quarterback in, handoff up the middle. Number nine, Malachi Coldjew. Taking the snap that time was Ashton Davidson for BC. It's gonna be a little bit short, it's gonna be third down, but I think no question here for uh, Coach Corey Philpot to go for it on here. The run game's moving the ball and has been productive today, so we'll see if uh, they can get the first down here on third and very short. Ashton Davidson now at quarterback for BC in the sneak position, trying to pick up the first down. Good push by New Brunswick. Is the ball out? New Brunswick is saying they got it. Turnover, it is indeed huge play by the New Brunswick defense to force an early turnover. So yeah, like you said, early turnover, big momentum swing into New Brunswick's favor. Great job of that defense. And again, that defense is really stepping up against the, the big BC offense and keeping them off the board. And now the second major, or the second turnover uh, that the defense has forced. Davidson, just his second play of the day. Turns the ball over, trying to sneak for the first down, and now New Brunswick has seized momentum. First possession for them in the second half. Linder looks to pass up the middle. Good throw, nice catch by Crowley. Carries the defender for a couple of more. First down, New Brunswick. So we talk about layering in plays, and so you gotta have your foundation of offensive plays, and then you have your secondary plays that build off of those, and that's one of those there. You see trips to the right with a tight end, and again, releasing a guy. They got the play action on the sweep. Again, holding the linebackers, and you bring your receiver or running back in behind the linebackers that are tight on the sweep, and so great execution there by New Brunswick. New Brunswick into BC territory. Pat, uh, swing route out. Run for Green, he'll get a few on first down. Well, the defense did a good job of stretching that to the sideline, because eventually you will run into the sideline. Good job, and again, the back just was patient and patient. Did get a decent gain, it's gonna be second and about six for New Brunswick, but I think already you're thinking, hey, we're probably in third down territory. I really have a feeling, you know, get a major on the board here, and uh, you're gonna be in good position based on the defense of New Brunswick right now. And off fake, flung out to the far side. That didn't have enough on it. It skips to hearsay, incomplete. Second down, third down now for New Brunswick. Well, and the receiver, slipped on the play and uh, you could see him take his couple steps up and as he went to come back he slipped a little bit so probably a combination of the quarterback not being fully sure of the receiver being ready the receiver not keeping his feet on the play uh, resulted in forcing this field goal attempt from just outside the 30 yard line this will be Wolgamut for New Brunswick, he's one for one today, hit from 17. This one from about 38. See what he can do. Good kick, and it's through. New Brunswick grabs the lead back, 6-5 off the foot of Wolgamut. These field goal kickers are having a day, I guess. They're gonna stay busy if uh, these offenses keep stalling when they get into scoring territory. So again, you talk about consistency and execution. Again, just one little mishap and that little uh, wide receiver screen just uh, was the one mishap that stalled this drive for New Brunswick. But needless to say, off the turnover, they get three and their defense will be ready to go back on the field and continue to make stands against this BC offense. Market from 31. Rob from Wogamut, who's been very efficient. That's three field goals and a safety today. That's your scoring. Neither team scored a touchdown, put up six in this tournament, and the defensive battle continues. Well, interesting that it's this close between the number five and number eight seed. We knew games will get more competitive on day two of the Canada Cup tournament. But uh, again, I was a little surprised of the scoring, but very competitive for uh, this matchup. Great to see both teams working hard defensively. Obviously, things going better than their offenses. Yo Allen's kick is short, received underneath by 
the big fella. Number 54, he'll fall down on the ball. And the BC offense will start now from their own 37. I think that may have been number 64, Dax oh. Williams. He's marked down at the D line, but I'm pretty sure as a returner, he's probably had a few reps in his lifetime. That may be the second or third he's ever had to catch a kick, but fielded cleanly. And again, as a wise lineman does on the kickoff return, get the ball and go down. Give your offense a chance to move the ball. I like that. Wise lineman. That's good. I like that. First down. It's a run play up the middle from number nine, Malachi Kolju. Short gain, and we have an injured BC player on the field. So a little bit of a, a missed timing in the backfield there. Again, just trying to smooth that out. And that's the result of, again, new quarterbacks and running backs working together. You know, a new snapper in there as well. Uh, just that timing just wasn't, wasn't quite there. And then the New Brunswick defense, obviously, right around the ball. That front seven doing a great job. Jack Bowman taking a minute to get his breath. He'll be up in a second. We'll take this chance to acknowledge Invictus Gloves. Invictus is the proud football glove provider for Football Canada and its national teams. If you're in need of quality football gloves with unique and customizable designs, visit www.invictusgloves.com. Stick to your game with Invictus. Coming out of the injury timeout, Bowman headed off the field under his own strength. BC's looking at a second and eight, 813 to go in the third quarter. And it's Ashton Davidson under center. He fumbled the ball on a sneak on the last chance for him at third down on the previous series. It resulted in three points for BC going, or New Brunswick going the other way, excuse me. So we'll see what Davidson has in store for New Brunswick here. Clock is set to roll, motion out to the right. Davidson takes the snap, steps back, looks to pass. Into the middle for Dallas. Great play on defense by number two. Alex Whalen getting a hand in. Great coverage. We do have a, a late flag come out in the backfield. We'll see if it was a late hit on the quarterback. I'm not sure. Maybe a holding call. Looks like it's probably going to be declined. Um, the edge rusher came with a lot of speed. Forced the holding call in the backfield. But again, New Brunswick. Great job, great defense on the pass. It was a little bit low defeat. The receiver was on his way down to corral that, and he got a hand in there enough to disrupt it, so it was not a completion. So again, New Brunswick defense once again stepping up and making some plays to hold the BC offense at bay, forcing the punt situation. Davidson had a good, good day throwing the ball on Sunday for BC against Ontario, but that pass knocked down by Alex Whalen. This will force... A punt. It's knocked end over end up the middle of the field. McLaughlin was going to play it off the bounce. I hope he didn't touch it because he's going to have to chase it down at his own 18. No yards flag thrown. He's wrapped up and tackled for a loss on the return, but there is no flags. No yards flag. Well, that's a situation where, again, we talked about returners fielding the ball in the air possible on that one but again you got to have a real confident receiver or running back or DB who's typically your return guys that's able to charge that ball and catch it on the run again the no yards will be applied to where that ball was fielded but again not much it looks like there's another penalty that's going to help New Brunswick situation they'll tack on the no yards from about the 21 yard line. I think we're gonna get a call. I think it may be unnecessary roughness and they're going up 15, so. They are Rob indeed all the way up to the 39 yard line. Bit of a boost to the New Brunswick offense coming off, capitalizing on a turnover and getting three points and grabbing the lead. So up six to five, Mike Linder out on offense for New Brunswick. He's been pretty run heavy for Team New Brunswick all tournament, Samson Green to his right. Linder keeps, rolls out to the right, flings it past to McLaughlin, off his fingertips and incomplete. 
Well, he probably wants that one back. A very catchable ball for a receiver and with room to run, he would have been off to the races there. But again, great job of the quarterback coming to, coming to his second level. You can see the linebacker stepping up on the running back and the receiver just not able to reach it. So a little bit high, but he had to throw over that linebacker. But one, he definitely wants back. Next time, he may take that to the house. Tough throw, incomplete on the pass. That's Linder's first incompletion today. He'll stick it back on the ground to Samson Green into the pile. Tackled up, wrapped up, maybe a yard. Third down. Put, 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 that was Crowley on the carry, put. sorry. Well, definitely seen some conservative play calling there on second and long, but as they've done all day, they've taken their time. They've made it conservative, didn't take any big risks. Again, right now, New Brunswick is winning the turnover battle, and again, the penalties after the punt return or on the punt return gave them some decent field position, but they're going to be giving it back to BC here with their punt team. Hersey out to punt for New Brunswick. Field position battle this morning at Foot Field. Every inch matters. 6.35 to go in the third quarter. Good kick. Out to the right side. Nearly bobbled, handled with one hand, runs into some traffic is number five, Max Ryder. BC will get to work from the 37 yard line. A little juggling going on on one end, a little acting going on on the other. The punter, I think, got hit a little bit and took a fall on that, hoping to draw the flag, but unlike maybe the professional ranks, uh, a little less given to the punters in their acting ability. Uh, there was some contact, but not enough for the officials to feel like a flag was uh, worthy to be thrown. So BC's offense back where they kind of started before their punt. We'll see if they can get some momentum and move the ball. Nick Hersey must be in drama in the second half of his year there. <laughs> Pitch out of the right side. Tackled at the 43-yard line. Ethan Dahl, the carry, second down, BC. Good first down production. We do have a flag down here. We'll see if that affects this play. But again, with a, a medium gain, if it's on New Brunswick, it will uh, give them a first down. If it looks like it's going the other direction. Offside looks like it's the call. Likely on a receiver, if it's uh, the lineman that move early, it's usually a procedure call. So a receiver on a run play, that'll drive a coach nuts if you're going offside on a run play. You're not even keen on getting downfield. Uh, you got to avoid those types of penalties as a receiver. And you know the officials are watching that closely with these running starts the receivers get in Canadian Rules football. Davidson now facing first and long. Tosses the pass out to Dahl on the right flank. He's pulled down on a nice tackle from the number 31, Evan Kenny. Yeah, Kenny did a great job of just pursuing the back. They like to get the receivers downfield and see the back just leaking off the edge right there, coming downhill. Good job, good tackle on a big, strong back uh, to limit the gain. And now they're facing just over second and 10 trying to convert. Again, this defensive battle continues. The defenses are stepping up. We'll see who steps up here on second and 10. Clock is rolling, 525 remaining in the third quarter. Second and long from the 36. Davidson sends his receivers, drops back. Nothing there on the left. He'll roll out right, off his right foot, slings the pass completed. Well past the first yard, first down yard sticks to number 83, Morgan McCubbin, and it's first down BC. Well, he looked short to the back again, but again, didn't have it, but his legs bought him the time on the rollout, and he found his receiver tiptoeing the sidelines, coming back for that ball again. Tight window to throw in, but great job, great completion to keep the drive moving for BC. Davidson showing off his athleticism on that rollout and throw. 17 yard completion pass to McCubbin, handoff to Dahl, big space right side. He gets to that second level and powers ahead for more. First down again for BC. Well, they are on a roll and a back, excited to be running the ball. You can see him just lower his shoulder on the end of this run. Again, speed through the hole, continues really untouched until the free safety was able to come up and make a play. And again, delivering the 
The blow on that was the running back and receiving that was the free safety who did step up to make that tackle. Big gain for Dahl. He'll get it again, he'll try the left side. Huge hole and Ethan Dahl grabs a third consecutive first down for BC. Well again, that time instead of lowering the shoulder using his quick powerful feet to get around and move the ball and get the extra few yards on the end of that run. You they, could you could drive a Edmonton Transit bus through that hole, Rob. You could, maybe even two. <laughs> <laughs> BC offensive line starting to open up space for their running backs. Ethan Dahl grabbing another first down. There's a handoff now to number nine, Malachi Kolju. He's wrapped up at the line, and finally New Brunswick makes a stop. Well, the ball came out, and now they ruled him down and. New Brunswick ended up coming up with the ball, but it looks like he was down. We'll see if on the replay we can see when that ball comes out. I think it does look like his legs may have been, or his knee may have been down on the ground. They kind of swung him around, and so uh, an, a missed opportunity for New Brunswick. Ball came out late. BC retains possession and has an opportunity to get some points on the board here, facing second and 10, looking to keep the drive alive. Second and 10, promising drive being put together here by Ashton Davidson in the BC offense. Receivers go. Davidson looking right. Pass is caught by number 15, William Lau. Whoa. And that will be, it's close. It's at the sticks. Is it going to be third down? It is. I think it is, and I'm a little surprised. A little surprised. What do we got here? Third and five. Yeah, field goal time. We'll see if uh, BC can retake the lead. We've had a number of lead changes here. Go back and forth. BC looking to take the lead knowing this is a defensive battle. These three points are critical. We'll see if they can convert on this field goal attempt. BC will try here from 28. Josh Sale. He's already hit one today. Snap. Retrieved, pulled back, kick is up, and it's good. Say how good from 28, and it is eight to six for BC. You know, Ashton Davidson is the holder on that, and you can see him have to pull the ball off his like right hip or right leg area. So the snap was not perfect, but great hands and a great job getting the ball from that spot to the pin and converting on the field goal, lots has to happen correctly on a play like that. You need a good snap, a good hold, and a good kick. All three got it done, and uh, the three points are good for BC to retake the lead. So this defensive battle continues. Probably the best drive we've seen from BC all tournament. It stalls deep inside New Brunswick territory. But they grab the lead back, 8-6. Two minutes to go in the third corner. New Brunswick takes the ball from the 35-yard line. Linder hands off to Samson Green. He pushes the pile ahead for a couple. Second down. They're coming back with that three receivers, tight end, fullback set again, looking to run the ball and establish that. Again, the clock ticket away on these long drives with a minute 30 left in the quarter, again, back to four receivers, taking that tight end back out on the second and nine situation. Second and nine, Linder to Green, looking for a hole, wrapped up quickly by Gabriel Curry, and BC holds firm. Third down, hunting team heading out for New Brunswick. So teams just really willing to be patient here, running the ball on second and long. We've seen it a lot today, again, uh, some lack of conversions on second down. Again, each team has put a couple of drives together, ending up in field goals as, we, as we've seen, but not willing to take a risk and go to the air. So again, punting from their own 34 to some dangerous returners. We'll see if uh, BC can uh, flip the script here and get a big play out of the returners. BC forces a quick two and out after grabbing the lead, and they're going to get this offense back on the field after a nice drive. Percy, high kick off the side of his foot and out of bounds. They're gonna mark it at inside 
New Brunswick territory at the 53. Excellent field position for BC. So net gain on that for New Brunswick was only like 15 yards on that. So again, not, not a great situation. Special teams playing a little bit of a role in the field position at battle. BC getting it inside New Brunswick territory, as you said, and uh, ready to roll and see if they can extend the lead that they just captured. Davidson's out there in the white helmet. That quarterback, ball. snap, miss cue, it's fumbled. They're gonna chase it down. Dahl takes the knee, and mistake there between snapper and quarterback. Big loss pushes BC way back inside their own zone. So again, we're talking consistency and execution, and BC again against Ontario on Sunday struggled. Big plays, and then a bad play, and that's one of those ones, just miscommunication again, different players not understanding how everything functions together, not quite gelling together as an offense. Again, costing them big. Now they're second and really long force to likely go to the air or be conservative with a draw run. But uh, ultimately that penalty may have, or that mishap may have cost them a drive opportunity. Second and a ton. Davidson's rolling out to the right of Vades. Aliku who stays with him, pulls him down. It's a sack for New Brunswick. And in this back and forth field position battle, that's a big win for New Brunswick, but somebody's hurt and I think it's Gideon Aliku and that's not good for New Brunswick. That is not again, first guy in there, but it was a pile. You can see guys all over the place. Again, great team defense pursuit, but when you're at the bottom of that pile, uh, the quarterback obviously took some heat, but again, back at the bottom of that pile, hopefully he's gonna be okay and up soon a big impact player on that defense that they can't afford to lose in what is turning out to be a huge defensive battle Gideon Aliku is having a excellent game for New Brunswick he's been getting into the backfield putting pressure on the quarterback and if he's not able to come back for the rest of the second half that's a huge hole on the edge for New Brunswick he's in some pain they're calling out more assistance and help he's uh, favoring that leg so Aliku is in some pain. That's an unfortunate break for New Brunswick, no doubt, and for the player. And it's those awkward piles yeah. that happen that, again, you're getting twisted underneath. And again, he was just kind of on the, the bottom end of that, pulling the quarterback down while the Cavalry arrived to pile on there to finish that tackle off. And unfortunately, something's happened there. Um, hopefully, uh, he's going to be okay, and they've just... Wave the flag for the end of the third quarter. So we're going to be flipping ends here while we uh, attend to this injury. And we'll uh, start the fourth quarter soon. Yedin Aliku uh, needing some help to get off the field here this morning at Foot Field. Six foot, 200 pound rush end out of Miramichi. Having a huge game. And, and it's unfortunate it looks like his afternoon might be over um, here today. We'll see. Third period is over, as Rob mentioned. 8-6 yeah, BC leads as we head to the final quarter. D day three of the Football Canada Cup will happen on Saturday. They'll play out the rest of the Constellation round as well as the medal round. So stay tuned for that. 2 o'clock this afternoon local time. We'll have the second Constellation game between Nova Scotia and Manitoba. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge GameStrat. GameStrat is a sports software company that provides coaches with the ability to have instant replay during the game on the sideline, bench, or up in the press box. Coaches are able to make real-time adjustments with GameStrat improving their overall team performance. GameStrat has quickly become the gold standard when it comes to sideline replay solutions for coaches, especially for football programs across North America. GameStrat provides itself on the quality of their products and customer service. Their system has the fastest video transfer times in the industry while also being extremely reliable and easy to use. Visit GameStrat.com and see for yourself. Cart is out on the field, Rob, and this is unfortunate scene for New Brunswick and Eli who's needing to be helped off by a number of players. Well, in depth is going to now uh, be tested on the New Brunswick defense again. One of their top performers today going down. We'll see how long if he's out for the game in the last quarter. Who is ready to step up? And 
depth is an important thing uh, over the course of this tournament as you play so many days in a short amount of time or so, so many games in a short amount of time. Um, you do need to have depth because it is a challenge physically for these athletes um, to, to survive and play a very physical game as he's been playing all, all day today. Again, now it's time for the defense around him and some depth to step up. They're going to be facing a punt situation. So again, they started uh, this drive, BC, on New Brunswick's 52. Obviously taking uh, a couple negative plays. They are now back almost 20 yards from there and, uh, and, and punting from there. So again, uh, a couple, you know, a, what turned out to be a, a good possession for BC. Two bad plays followed, and now they're giving the ball back to New Brunswick, barring a turnover here. Uh, in what seems to be what will be decent field position for New Brunswick. Third and 30. Ryder with the punt. Taken at his own 42. Crowley, little bit of space. He'll get up to midfield before being brought down by a couple of special teams players for Team BC. So now the field position advantage swings back to New Brunswick. So again, catching the ball in the air made a big difference. Again, Got them 15 yards on the return. Uh, let's see if New Brunswick can do something. See if they get a little bit more aggressive. Again, they've come out and, again, be very cautious play calling, sticking with the run. They haven't turned the ball over, taking advantage of a few turnovers by BC. We'll see if New Brunswick can get some points out of this short field. Opening minute of the fourth quarter. Timeout call before New Brunswick could snap the ball by BC. Again, another personnel issue. One guy not on the field that's supposed to be, so they've used the timeout, and we'll see with us, such a close game. Uh, we'll see if using the timeouts on things like that uh, costs them late in this game. With a tight, tight score here uh, all day, it's going to turn into maybe which team scores last, and it may be the last field goal. If someone can come away with a major here in the fourth quarter, that may be enough to take home the victory. Ben Wogelman hit twice, one from 17, one from 31. And so you would need to get down close to the red zone to give him a shot, though he hit them both with good distance. And that's what uh, this game's gonna boil down to. There's no win too, Rob, so uh, the kickers can maybe thrive in that situation. But a big drive coming up for New Brunswick here, coming out of the BC timeout. Ball is at midfield. Mike Linder, fairly efficient day, passing the ball. I think just the one incomplete for him so far this afternoon. He's got Green in the backfield. Three, three receivers out to the right. There's the snap. Play fake, hits Crowley wide open down at the BC 35. He beats one tackle, he's wrapped up. Continuing to fight ahead, Crowley, huge gain. First down, New Brunswick in there on the doorstep. So this is where we talk about those secondary plays again. Run, 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 and they've been patient with the run. A little bit of play action, getting them down the field in open space. I like that. I just wish New Brunswick would come to that a little bit more often. They are run heavy, which is paid off in, in, in possession, but now they need to move, and that was a big chunk play. Great play call by New Brunswick to get the ball into the red zone. Huge game for Crowley. First down, New Brunswick in the red zone. There's green flags thrown. Green will get up to close to the eight yard line, but we'll see what the call is. Well, another good run again, building off the momentum of that big play. We'll see what this penalty uh, how it impacts the play. It looks like it's going against New Brunswick. Hate to see another receiver offside. We'll see what the call is. Early indication was, and it is a penalty against New Brunswick. So again, another really unacceptable penalty. Wide receivers know that, and they don't want to take those types of penalties again. Taking a big run off the board, which would get them almost, I think it was inside the 10. So tough penalty to take on her for a receiver, but let's see if New Brunswick can overcome starting here. First and 15. From the BC 22, two backs. Linder sends his receivers, doesn't hand off, throws to Bawa. 
Breaks the tackle, hit up at around the 10. Good game for Bawa on first down. Second down coming up. The bench down here is a little upset because a little bit of contact after he stepped out of bounds, but really not a lot. Again, you can see there, he keeps his legs churning. And again, just a little bit late. Again, he didn't eliminate him, but he definitely had a little bit of contact after the, and that's what some of the players on the bench were upset about, but great run, great gain on first down. They're now second, second and six here, really close to the major. Let's see if they can convert. New Brunswick would love to punch one in here, Linder. Rolls right, hits the brakes, in pursuit, he's gonna get rid of it, dumps it off just in time. Well, coming with the play action and pulling, he didn't get the edge, good job by the BC defense to contain the quarterback, forcing him to throw it away. We'll see here again, second and five, they get three or four on that, they probably go for it, but out comes the field goal unit once again to see if they once again can retake the lead. Wolgam out, out to try his third field goal Get of the it, morning. Ryan, that looks it. like it's from 18 yards. He's hit from 17, he's hit from 31. No win. Facing the north and goal. Looking for a clean snap. This is to give New Brunswick the lead. Snap is good, kick is up, and it's through. That's another one for Wolgamut. He's three for three, and it's 9-8 New Brunswick. So again, great drive again. Short field, took advantage, a couple big plays, one play action going to the air, a nice run that was off the board. Again, couldn't convert that second and five, so again, forced to take the field goal. Obviously, the major would have been a huge lift for New Brunswick this late in the game, but... Uh, had to settle for the field goal. So good execution on the field goal. Uh, good job of BC's defense just kind of stymieing that drive inside the red zone. Uh, hopefully giving their offense an opportunity to move the ball. But we're going to need to see a drive by BC. And again, a little inconsistent over the course of the day. We'll see if they have something left in the last 10 minutes of this game to see if they can get down the field and retake the lead. 9-8 New Brunswick, Robin, you could really see the fruits of a run-heavy first half starting to pay off for head coach Zach Colangelo, opening up some room for his running backs to release downfield. That's what created the opportunities on that last drive. Well, and that's what you do is if you're yeah. committed to the game, you have to have another level of that. And we're starting to see both teams use that second-level play calling for their offense to catch teams guessing or catch teams reacting to what they've seen most of the game. Allen's kick is received by Carter Dallas. He runs into a wall of tacklers at about the 27. BC will start well inside their own territory here on an important drive. 9.06 to go in the game. So after the field goal, BC elects to go kickoff return. And again, usually your measure on kickoff return is do you get it out past the 35 because you can, so you can elect to take the ball on the 35 instead of a return with their athletes. I probably make the same decision, get it to your returners. Unfortunately um, for BC, New Brunswick had a great cover team there and they're taking the ball inside their own 30. So BC starting in their own end to see if they can get that long drive they've been waiting for. New Brunswick special teams much better with discipline in the second half. Hand off to Colju. Sorry, that's Dahl. Short gain. Second down and about eight. So two teams just willing to stick with the run. I think BC against Ontario was willing to go to the air a little bit more. And again, we'll see if they go to the air here on second and long, deep in their own end. Davidson loves to connect with William Lowe. Look for him. He's going to be in motion here on the right side near us. Davidson gets the snap. He looks left, up the middle. Good pass was behind number 83, Morgan McCubbin. Ball is out, it's a fumble. New Brunswick recovers and another huge turnover by the New Brunswick defense coming up huge. So again, a big play. This has happened again. Receivers not securing the ball again. Would love to get that back and just tuck the ball away. There is a late flag and I believe it's an illegal block here. We're gonna. There it is, ball comes out. Good job picking it up there. We'll see maybe in the screen. Right there is the illegal block. Good, good job, camera guys catching that. 
Um, it's going to move them back, but needless to say, after the fumble, New Brunswick has got the ball back. And, you know, thinking now with 8.03 left, uh, a long drive, which both teams have proved they can do long drives if they get things going, uh, is going to chew up some clock and maybe give New Brunswick an opportunity to extend this lead. Still good field position, starting on their own 48. Second fumble of the game recovered by the New Brunswick defense, both in huge moments. McCubbin had completed a catch and was running full steam ahead when it was knocked away from him there. New Brunswick offense back out on the field. That's quarterback Mike Linder in the black helmet. Takes a look back at the play clock really quickly. He's going to let it get down a little bit more. Sends his receivers, gives to Samson Green, right tackle. Good gain on first down, flag flies. He got about four or five, depending on the call. And it's going to be against New Brunswick, so it'll come back. So again, first down production was good. Five, six yards on the run. Coaches on the sideline, <laughs> same posture, hands on the hip, not happy with the flag because now you're again, you're putting a run team into a first and 20. Makes it difficult to stay to your game plan. So when you get those holding calls, and we've seen a few of them this game, really extend, making, forcing yourself to uh, open up the playbook a little bit, maybe run something that you're not quite as comfortable running in the system that you have in place. We'll see what they have here on first and 20. Linda and the New Brunswick, New Brunswick offense push back to the 38-yard line. First and 20. They have been generally run conscious here in these situations, and it is a handoff to Green. He'll get up to about the 47, 48-yard line and get back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, great run. Again, I mean, we've seen it all day long. Again, big job by the offensive line to create some holes. We'll see him here. We got a pulling guard out, sealing the edge, and good cut in the seam. You could see that seam. It was a very, very small window, but great vision by the back to cut back and get a reasonable, manageable second and ten. BC offense on the sideline, looking for their next crack at the New Brunswick defense. But it's New Brunswick with the ball, second and ten. Green gets it, gets it again, looking left, red. Nicely by the BCD, and it will bring up a third down situation. Well, New Brunswick again staying conservative, which is what we've seen all day, relying on a defense that's proven to be able to turn the ball over and stop BC when needed. We'll see if uh, special teams changes things today, but New Brunswick in a punt situation. Again, working themselves out of a first and 20, now facing third and 10, forced to punt this away from their own 48. One point lead for New Brunswick, 6.33 remaining in the fourth quarter. Hersey out to punt again. He's been a busy punter this tournament and they could use a good one from him. His longest is 43 yards. New Brunswick would like to pin BC deep. Punts left side. BC returner dropped it on the catch. That'll allow the special teams to swim up and bring him down quickly. That was Max Ryder flag in behind the play from the back judge. Yeah, we'll see uh, what the call is here and how this impacts. We've seen it happen too many times. Penalties on special teams one way or the other. And again, you can see there, corrals it, but really has nowhere to go when the timing is thrown off. And special teams is so much about blocking at the right time. It's so hard to block good athletes in open field for very long. So timing your block up and when a ball is dropped by a returner like that, it just throws the timing off and those blocks aren't held for quite as long as they needed because of that timing issue. And so again, in this situation, um, they're going back BC direction. So uh, penalty on BC is gonna make this field even longer with 6.09 left. BC down by one, looking to get some sort of point, but it's going to take a long drive before they have the opportunity for points. With the penalty, that pushes BC back to their own 21-yard line, and New Brunswick does pin them deep. So coming off a turnover, pass is swung out to the left side. Andrea with the catch and run. And he gets a few. Second down. Yeah, well read by the New Brunswick defense getting out into the flat in a hurry. You can see the motion again. 
No disguise there. He's out there. Good job of getting a hand on the ball. And I'm sure defensive coaches preaching to their guys, get tackle the ball, get a punch on the ball, get that ball coming out. They've seen it come out a few times today already, and it's benefited them. They're going to be going after that ball, trying to force another turnover and try to get a stop here on second and seven. Aiden Hewitt back under center for BC. Tough snap, flag on the play. Connection to McCubbin up around the 40-yard line. He's brought down that flag in the area of offside. Well, great execution of finding the hole by the receiver and the quarterback. We'll see what the penalty is. It looks like it's going against New Brunswick, so the play will be greater. And so uh, defensive coach talking to New Brunswick's guys, making sure things are clear and they understand what they're doing. Obviously a critical drive, only being up by one here. New Brunswick has got to get a stop. They do have a long field to defend. And uh, BC is trying to... Uh, Move the ball, and they've got a little bit of momentum here. We've got uh, first down. Ball on the BC 38. Aiden Hewitt connecting with McCubbin. For about 12 yards. Hewitt sends the receivers. Pitch right to Andrea. New Brunswick closes, and he's brought down at the 38 yard line. No gain on the play. Well, great job containing the edge once again. You can see the edge defender really ripped a force to get outside. He almost got stuck inside, but because he forced to get outside, forcing the back up into the inside, the defenders in pursuit were able to close that hole down. So good job in New Brunswick's defense, kind of containing him there. Now facing another second and long. See if BC can convert to keep the drive alive. Aiden Hewitt trying to get his team another first down, keep the offense on the field. 4.29 to go. He Hewitt drops back, pass through the middle. William Wall, great catch. First down, BC. They seem to be finding that same, same play that they had go on the other side of the field again. As soon as he gets past the linebackers, he's uh, just crossing inside. You can see his eyes go straight to it find the hole, perfect delivery, nice catch. Again, creating a first down, getting some momentum for BC. They're on the move here, through the air with a little bit of run mixed in, but again, converting second and 10. Big task accomplished, let's see if they can keep this going. Under four minutes to go, ball at midfield. Hewitt connecting with low, great pass and catch. Handoff up the middle. Cole Jew brought down after a gain of two. Second down and eight. Pearson did a great job of coming off his block and wrapping him up early to limit the game. But again, the task they haven't been able to do on this drive is stop, stop them on second and 10 through the air. And so I'm sure BC is going back to the air. We'll see if they come back to a seam route or we see if they have something different mixed in to convert this second and eight. Last play before the three minute. Hewitt's got to try to get it off quicker here. Runners go. He'll roll out left. Dingy on him. Dingy with the tackle. Great play, Landon Dingy. And New Brunswick comes up with a huge sack. Wow, that's a perfect timing for a big defensive play again. Second and eight, I would venture a guess that they would probably go for it on third and eight or third and anything reasonable but now taking a loss of almost 10 yards because of the strong defensive play by New Brunswick they are forcing the punt back into the hands of New Brunswick with only just under three minutes to play New Brunswick is in a prime opportunity to possibly run this clock out and take away a victory a couple of things on that play Rob Hewitt holding on to the ball Dingy was looking for the strip sack he just held on to the ball. And the other thing is it takes them out of range for a single on a punt, too. So that could have tied the game. Yeah, they're in uh, yeah, t tough play for BC, obviously. Yeah. I mean, they had it drawn up. He had them rolling out. And, and, you know, that has been successful for them. Unfortunately, didn't execute well enough to make that happen. And here the ball is going back to New Brunswick on a kick off the side of the foot. It does check in bounds. So he's going to be able to field it. Rowley runs out of bounds at the 44. New Brunswick offense heading out 242 inside stop time with a one point lead. And in a battle of defenses, it's New Brunswick's Landon Dingy and their defense coming up with the biggest play of the game so far. So we'll see if uh, timeouts 
play a part uh, in the last few minutes. Again, we've seen both coaches have to use timeouts on personnel issues. Um, and we'll see if BC uh, has kept enough timeouts to preserve some time to give their offense another chance. And New Brunswick has the ball in their hands and can run this one out with a few first downs. We'll see if they can execute. McLaughlin with the shovel pass, little room on the right side. Good gain on first down by McLaughlin. Again, great timing on that. Again, you're trying to catch the defense with some lateral speed. Again, using the edge. Timing's critical on a sweep like that. If the timing's not off, you're not gonna catch them the way you want. But great job of executing. Blockers getting out in front. Decent gain for first down. Good opportunity here for New Brunswick to try to convert this first down, get a new set, and run some more time off the clock. Clock is running, 2.25 remaining. Second and five for New Brunswick. That's Samson Green. Pushes the pile ahead, first down New Brunswick. That's one first down, Rob. Well, and New Brunswick is doing what they've done all day. Be patient with the run. Let your running backs read it. You see him cut up through the hole. Great end zone shot there from our camera guys. You can see converting the first down and the clock continues to tick away. That puts Green up over 70 yards for the day. He's carried the bulk of the workload for this New Brunswick offense. 2.05 remaining, 9-8 New Brunswick lead. Ball on their own, 53. Trying to get at least two more first downs to put this one away. Hand off Green, big hole right side. He's up to the 50 yard line and into BC territory. Second down. So scoreboard is showing no timeouts remaining for either team. So you are in full control of the clock and you can see New Brunswick and their quarterback at offense using the time wisely, using all 20 minutes of the play clock. Coaches are talking to their quarterbacks, making sure that the, the clock runs down. You want it inside of five seconds for sure. Uh, you don't want to take a penalty, but inside of five seconds using as much time as you can Second and three, hand off to Green. He stopped about a yard short of the first down. And a decision for head coach Zach Colangelo. Well, big decision here. We've talked about net yards on punt and it hasn't been great for New Brunswick, partly because of the returners, a couple missed punts, but again, they are third in what looks to be about six to eight inches. So I think they're bringing in some heavy set guys. I think they're gonna go for it here and see if they can plunge away. And again, with only 126 and no timeouts left, if they convert this first down, this could be the ball game able to run out the clock almost completely or very, very little time if BC were to get a stop. So looks like we've got a stoppage in play. BC takes a timeout. Even though the scoreboard showed no timeouts remaining, BC obviously had one up their sleeve that they were hiding, and they take a timeout. It's a huge moment in this ball game. If the BC D-line can make a stand, then they're in wonderful field position. And coming out of the, uh, the huddle, I, I think they're gonna try to get the big boys to push them ahead just enough for the first. Well, we'll see if BC personnel-wise matches up against New Brunswick. You saw New Brunswick bring in uh, a little bit of a heavier set, so they've got an extra lineman in there, usually lined up at the tight end spot. Sometimes they have an extra running back, like a fullback at the other tight end spot. We'll see what they do here. We'll see if their splits are tight, because if they tighten down on their splits, that means toe-to-toe -to -toe by the lineman, which looks like they're pretty tight from our angle here. They are just going to rely on the lineman to make a move. We'll see if they can convert this critical third and inches play clock under 10 it's green taking the ball on the sneak flag flies on the near side new brunswick bench thinks it's offside against bc it was actually crowley not green taking the snap and plunging forward he got more than enough for the first down but what's the call on the field offside bc it'll be a first down new brunswick well, great play for New Brunswick. I think they're gonna decline the penalty and take the yards because what that does is it makes the clock run. 
And so actually, even though the penalty would give them five yards, if the penalty gives them five yards, because it's a gain by a penalty, the clock would not run. In this case, the clock will run if they take the first down by run. And so field position is not the issue here. It's time on the clock as it clicks away. We'll see. Get the official call. It is indeed declined because the first down was gained on the quarterback sneak. And they are going to run the clock once the uh, officials are set and whistle this one in, ready to play. And if New Brunswick can manage the clock well, they can chew up almost the rest if they get a first down. This game will be in the books. 120 clock rolling. New Brunswick up 9 8. They've gotten two first downs so far. Need probably one more to seal it. Snap, hand off. Green runs into one of his linemen, pivots out to the right and is hauled down after a short gain. Well, the preaching from the coach right now, right now for New Brunswick is ball security. Obviously, if you can get a first down, that's great. Clock management is gonna be important. But for your backs, you're gonna have your back in that you believe is the most secure running back. And again, New Brunswick has done a great job keeping the ball in their hands with no turnovers today. Again, ball security is absolutely critical. Using the clock with 10 seconds left on the play clock, he'll hopefully wind this right down as much as he can to take as much time off the clock as he possibly can. Linder gives to Crowley. Crowley out to the left, breaks the tackle, pushes ahead. He's up close to the first down marker. He thinks he's got it. Signal from the official is first down. So again, with possibly no timeouts left, which I'm guessing they have none left, BC is not going to be able to stop the clock with 37 seconds left. They should. They should be able to run this one out. And you can hear the crowd here in the fourth quarter has picked up. The stands are getting banged. They're on their feet. They're excited to see New Brunswick trying to wrap this one up. It would be, at least according to seeding, a bit of an upset here at the tournament, which has gone pretty much chalk so far. This is the number eight seed, 25 seconds away from punching their ticket to the fifth place game Saturday afternoon here at Foot Field. There's the handoff. Green pushes ahead. He's tackled close to the 30, and with 14 seconds remaining, it's just a formality now. The coach out on the field giving very direct information to his quarterback how to take a knee. Again, sometimes you don't end up practicing taking a knee as a team. And so yeah, good point. I've seen some really interesting things happen on this last play where everyone takes a knee, the linemen are taking knees, and you know the, the quarterback's got to make the right call. Just, hey, you guys stand up. Usually the officials are in on this. As you can see, they're really close here as the clock strikes zero. They just need to take the final knee. And that is going to wrap up this huge victory for New Brunswick. Oh, hold your roll, <laughs> New Brunswick. They're heading out onto the field. They're celebrating like they've just won the Vanier Cup. <laughs> They're happy. They've won 9-8. New Brunswick with the upset. They will play Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock Mountain Time. That's 4 o'clock out in New Brunswick. So BC not happy about the results, obviously. But again, we talked about earlier, this consolation side of the brackets is setting you up for next year's tournament as well. And so automatically, New Brunswick will now be playing for the 5-6 spot. And of course, BC, with their offensive struggles, not able to get a drive late in the game, is going to be playing for 7-8. and eight. So that's the impact a game like this has. And of course, Saturday's game will finalize those uh, final rankings in this year's Canada Cup. Disappointing result for BC, who came into the tournament with a respected and deep offensive lineup. They've just they've never been able to get kind of out of second gear, Rob. Yeah, they haven't. You know, again, that rhythm, the consistency is really important. You can see them shaking hands at the, at the place. Coaches uh, giving themselves, uh, you know, shaking hands, interacting with the other coaches, players, congratulating each other. Um, but yeah, BC just needed to find that rhythm in their offense, and we'll see if a couple days and a little bit of extra practice will, will allow them to find that rhythm, because at moments they look like they could move the ball at ease. They came with some chunk plays off of play action, 
and, and a solid run game obviously is the base of their offense but really never got going and didn't show the consistency other than the couple drives that resulted in field goals. Obviously weren't able to put the ball in the end zone which was a struggle this morning. Um, but again, BC's not going to be happy with the results of this one. Obviously coming in favored to win um, and then getting upset by New Brunswick and of course on the New Brunswick side. Very excited, you know, it's great to see an offense get the ball with a couple minutes left and be able to run out the clock. And that's uh, not easy to do when a defense knows you're likely gonna be running the ball, which they did, but they gained first downs with the run and were able to put this one away with their offense taking a knee. BC will play in the seventh place game Saturday morning, local time 10 o'clock. That is nine Pacific out on the West Coast. Player of the game awards being handed out now here at midfield. New Brunswick still very happy, jubilant over there on their own 45. What a win for that program in the province to win 9-8. We got more action coming up here on Sports Canada. Second consolation round game, Manitoba and Nova Scotia will kick off at 2 p.m. local. Parker Scott winning defensive player for BC. That's the number 34. He had a good game, active, making a ton of tackles on special teams and on defense. And a lot of work getting done in the trenches by the front seven of both these defenses with the heavy, heavy run attack by the different teams. Morgan McCubbin getting offensive player of the game. Accolades for his performance. A deep threat, tall player. And of course, he uh, unfortunately had the, the one fumble um, that uh, changed the course of the game a little bit, but he, uh, he had an otherwise effective game offensively. Well, and, and I would like to see BC go to the air a little bit more. They seem to, I know they use it off of play action, which in order to use play action, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta run the ball. But I think going to the air, they could have taken advantage of some mismatches in the secondary. Landon Dingy with the Defensive Player of the Game Award for New Brunswick. He was in the backfield all game long. He might even need to change the number on his sweater. He was back there so much. Well, number nine, sometimes these teams just don't know the numbers you're going to get, and they get a sign. And is <laughs> I meant he could wear a running back number. That was, that was what I meant. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> he could be getting handoffs. That's how much he was back there. And the offensive player of the game, he carried the ball over a dozen times. Samson Green, a huge day, 80 yards nearly on the ground for New Brunswick, and he carried them to a 9-8 slim win. Huge defensive battles, field positions, but it was exciting, and we thank you for tuning in with us here this morning to catch this one. I'm looking forward to the next three games. We've got a big slate of football again today, four in a row. It's going to be great to watch. Uh, a couple matchups coming up. Again, all these games, tight matchups, as we saw that one came down to the wire. Final plays, defenses need to make stands. Offense was able to run that one out. So congratulations to New Brunswick. TJ, it's been good. I think we got another one together here. So we're going to be here for your next show in about an hour. And um, looking forward to the matchups here later today. You betcha. It's uh, Manitoba, Nova Scotia coming up top of the hour. I've been saying 2 o'clock all morning. That's how much I know. It's 1 o'clock kickoff time. For the next one, of course, Ontario will take on Saskatchewan at 4 o'clock. And Quebec and Alberta, the headliner tonight at 7. 9-8, New Brunswick prevails. They'll play for fifth on Saturday, BC 4-7. On behalf of Sport Canada and ICU Productions, thank you for tuning in. This game will be available on YouTube right after we close. For Rob, I'm TJ Phillips. Good afternoon from Edmonton. <laughs>